Hey guys, it's Tilly and welcome back to my channel. Today I have no idea what my hair is doing, but let's just roll with it because I cannot tame this beast. So today I'm going to be talking about my top three favorite and worst reads so far of 2017. It's only going to be three of each because, to be honest, I've had a really crappy year when it comes to reading books so far. I've probably reread more books than I have actually read, and the majority of the books that I have read have been kind of like average or disappointing, so I'm going to just try and stay like positive here and just half that number and talk about the ones that I really enjoyed and talk about the ones that I didn't enjoy as much and just yeah let you guys hear all about that greatness. So we'll jump straight into it and starting off we have The Wrath and The Dawn by Rooney at He. This is actually a book that I did enjoy. I read this book and then The Rose and the Dagger like straight afterwards and it was kind of really easy and fun to read. There was some parts of the storyline which I kind of like questioned a little bit but all in all I think like this book helped me get out of a reading slump and I read the books really quickly and I did like the characters and different part ways that the plot ended up turning in it and plus they're like really beautiful books as well so I mean of course I want to enjoy that. In this book you have a boy king called Khalid and I apologize now if I get any of the characters names wrong I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce them all but I will try my best so you have Clid who is a boy king and every night he takes a new wife who becomes like the queen or the princess I can't exactly remember what terminology they get but they die by the morning anyway and everyone just thinks that this boy king is an absolute horrible person he's a monster and fair enough because he kills someone every single night then you have Sharazad who basically wants to get revenge so she puts herself forward to be the next queen and she doesn't only plan to go in there thinking she will die but she will also kill this terrible monster boy king as well but she ends up discovering a secret and slowly they both fall in love with each other and it's like this heart-wrenching and dangerous love story that, you know, things go terribly wrong in. So one of the first books that has been one of my worst reads of the year. I've talked about it a bit before in other videos so I'm sure you guys aren't too shocked but it's Three Dark Crowns by Ken Dare Blake. This book sounded like it was going to be so fantastic and it was a severe, severe letdown. So in every generation on the island of Fenburn, a set of triplets is born, three queens, all equal heirs to the crown and possessed of a coveted magic. Mirabella, a fierce elemental, can spark hungry flames with a click of her finger. Catherine, a poisoner, is known to be resistant to the deadliest of snake bites. And Arisno, as a naturalist, is rumored to have the ability to bloom the roses of roses. But becoming the queen crowned is not just a matter of royal birth. These three sisters must fight to the death for the throne. And on the night they turn 16, the battle begins. Only one queen can inherit the crown. Whose side are you on? And up here it says, three sisters, one throne, and a fight to the death. So, reading that blurb, I'm sure you guys are expecting this real action-packed badass book, but in reality it was so slow and the characters are really bland and the different point of views got quite boring to read. I wasn't even entirely sure who I was reading from at certain points and by the end of it I'm pretty sure I just like flick skimmed the reading and like I just, it was just so slow and boring and nothing held my attention and I think it was a really good setup for the next book in the series but the first book just fell so flat for me. I'm gonna keep a pattern going and show you guys my next favorite book that I have read which is Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepides. And Ruta Sepides is basically the queen of writing historical fiction but Salt to the Sea was a whole new level for me. This book was absolutely heartbreaking and destroying and it has so much gloom and gore in it but it was also really eye-opening and I don't think it's really for the weak-hearted to read. There were sentences in this book and situations that these characters are put in that really hit you hard as a reader to put you into that character's perspective and what it was like during these tough times. And I think that Ruta Sepides did a really, really good job of transporting the reader into this story. In 1945, four teenagers, four secrets. Each one born of a different homeland, each one hunted and haunted by tragedy, lies, and war. As thousands of desperate refugees flock to the coast in the midst of a Soviet advance, four paths converge, vying for passage aboard the Wilhelm Gustloff, a ship that promises safety and freedom, yet not all promises can be kept. So that is Salt to the Scene. If you guys like historical fiction and you're not too worried to read about gore and death and other really, really bad and brutal things, then I highly recommend picking this book up. I had so many feels. The next book that I have on like my least favorite book list, it wasn't horrible. I didn't hate it. It was just a very average book and my expectations for it were a lot higher than they should have been and I was pretty let down by it and I know a few people were as well, like especially because this author is like an automatic buy for me, so I bought the book without even knowing what it was really about. So I guess it's kind of my fault for that one. But that one is released by Patrick Ness. Obviously, like, there's a few tabs in there because Patrick Ness is just amazing at writing, like, some freaking good sentences. Like, he has some words that just really hit you and you get a lot of feelings from them. But as for the actual storyline and the characters in this book, it felt so flat. So as for the birth of this book, it is... It's Saturday. It's summer. And although he doesn't know yet, everything in Adam Thorne's life is going to fall apart. Relationships will change, he'll change, but maybe, just maybe, he'll find freedom in the release. 
Time is running out though because way across the town a ghost has risen from the lake. Searching, yearning, she leaves a trail of destruction in her wake. That's all that you guys get for this book but I must say it is like a contemporary with a kind of like paranormal twist but the paranormal twist in this seemed so pointless that like this would have been a good story if that wasn't in it but I have had different opinions on this some people really did like the paranormal twist whereas I just liked the contemporary side and even then it was a very basic contemporary story but it's Patrick Ness and everyone loves his writing so now my last favorite book I'm sure you guys have also heard me talk about this plenty of times because it has probably been my favorite book so far of 2017 that is Ballad for a Mad Girl by Vicki Wakefield I can never ever sum this book up correctly so like I have been doing this entire video I'm just gonna read you guys the blurb everyone knows 17 year old Grace Foley is a bit mad she's not afraid of anything except losing as part of the feud between two local schools in Swanston, Grace accepts a dangerous challenge. That night she experiences something she can't explain. The funny girl isn't laughing anymore and she's drawn deeper into the 20 year old mystery of missing girl Hannah Holt. She can no longer tell what's real or imagined. Is she moving close to the truth? Or is she at risk of losing everyone, including herself? This book just literally has everything in it. So it's got the paranormal twist, it's got great characters, the writing is phenomenal, the author is Australian, so it's like a Love Us YA celebration. And it's got like mystery and horror, and it's got everything you need in a book. Plus there's no romance in it, and if that hasn't convinced you yet, me looking at you will. The last book that I have hated the most this year, probably one of my most hated books so far, has been A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. Oh my god, you hate a Sarah J Maas book! The world is coming to an end! No, because the Sarah J Maas book was so bad compared to her other books. My favourite of all time is going to be A Court of Mist and Fury, and I was really hoping that with every book that Sarah J Maas writes, she just gets better and better and better, but she peaked at A Court of Mist and Fury, because A Court of Wings and Ruin was a letdown. Sarah J Maas has the ability to write books that keeps you captivated and you read them like they're the best thing ever but the moment you put these books down reality closes in and you kind of realize how crappy that storyline was and the characters and everything that she did to it just wasn't as good as what it felt like when you were reading it. If you guys want to see me do a spoiler video review of A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas where I pretty much talk about everything that I thought was wrong with this book, let me know in the comments below because I will do it because obviously if you can't tell I have a lot of emotions about this aside the fact that I just keep dead panning the camera. Sarah J Maas writes high fantasy, she is too serious, Throne of Glass and A Court of Thorn and Roses. Um, a Court of Thorn and Roses is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast. I'm not sure if the rest of that series is supposed to be retellings but I don't think so. <laughs> But if that seems like something up your alley, everyone tends to love Sarah J Maas and like I said, her writing is good enough to keep you captivated. So there you guys have my three top three best and worst reads so far of 2017. Hopefully I will pick up my reading game and find way more good books so I can just do like a top ten best books that I've ever read for 2017. Because, come on, we all love good books, right? Thank you guys for watching and for putting up with this mess of my life. And hopefully I'll see you guys again soon and that I will start to do regular videos again. Once again, um, I will be having my website up soon for my bath bombs if you guys watched my last video. If you haven't, I'm going to have like a link for you guys to go and check it out because I did some pretty cool stuff like the last few weeks and I was really excited about it and you guys can hear all about it if you want or not want. You guys can just leave. Please don't leave. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have a lovely bookish day and hopefully I shall see you guys again soon. And yeah, bye.